Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about something very, very important in continuum mechanics, which is kinematics. And why is this important? Because if you want to compute strains, stresses, forces, displacements in solids, and so on, you need to very, very important understand this concept of kinematics. And in today's video, I would like to talk to you about this concept in terms of the classical mechanics and also compare it with uh, purely dynamics formulation. Yes. So please, um, now going into the topic, we can see here, we can see here in this slide, we have this classical picture which is always illustrated in all computational solid books, in which imagine this is a potato and you are exerting a force here. So you're trying to push the potato from one initial configuration, which is here in the, represented on the left hand side, and you're pushing it and then it will deform into this configuration on the right hand side here, the, which will be happening after a certain time equal to t yes so if you imagine two points on this potato initial configuration let's call them point p and point q and these points you you know their initial location which is denoted by the x yes and x so this is indicates if we are speaking about a three-dimensional space the a vector which positions uh, which which in which these particles are positioned in a particular coordinate like uh, in, in some x and some y and some z direction and and so on for this other particle q you can also represent the a link between these two particles through a vector called dx yes and dx may be defined as the position of the particle Q minus the position of the particle P. Yes? So this is the original configuration of this fiber. Let's call it like that. So when you apply a deformation to this fiber, I mean, you after your push, you will end up with this right-hand side here in which you will have the deformed configuration and we will denote it by the letter y here so in this case the particle p will be deforming into into y of p yes this is the deformed the deformed coordinates of the same particle p and the particle q from x will be deforming to the current configuration uh, the form position y of q yes so this fiber can be represented again by this vector dy here denoted as the deformation of this particle q minus the deformation of the particle p yes so you have this fiber on the initial and on the deformed configuration all right so now let's say that's the, that this deformation happens through a function called phi which we don't know at this moment, but we let's assume that this, this exists in fact. So in this way, we can uh, map through this uh, deformation function phi an initial position of the particle P through its deformed configuration using this mapping function phi. The same would be for the, the mapping of this particle Q as well yeah and now if we want to apply the same concept to mapping the fiber that we defined previously here so let's let's assume now that uh, let's express this fiber in terms of this mapping configuration and we can say here like that the current position in order to obtain y of q we know that uh, the x of q can be defined as x of p plus dx. Yes, this would provide us the resulting vector, which is resulting initial position vector, which is x of q. 
And if we apply the mapping and at a particular time, arbitrary time t, then it will provide us y of q. Yes, the minus sign will be the same as here. And then we apply the mapping of this particle p as it is here. If we just simply substitute the mapping of this initial particle p, it will provide us with an expression for the deformation of the fiber expressed in terms of this mapping. Yeah. So now, if we look at this expression, we can see, we can recognize here some familiarity. And this familiarity comes from the derivative, right? Because you have a difference in the function, and this function is being perturbed by some vector dx here. So this here, we can relate it immediately, associating it with the derivative, the definition of a derivative, as it is here. Right, and this derivative we can see it expressed in here as the derivative of phi with respect to x. But in this case, since x is a vector and a vector has three components, the derivative is, is rather that in the derivative is going to be a gradient, and the gradient can be expressed mathematically using a NABLA operator, as, in, as it is expressed in here. And the gradient will have nine components because the vector had three in the x, y, and z direction. The gradient will have nine components, and this will be a second order tensor, which in continuum mechanics is usually denominated with the capital letter F. So using this deformation gradient, we can express the deformation of a fiber by multiplying it times the initial position of the fiber. And this will provide us the, the current configuration of that fiber dy, as in here. So just one particular remark is that in many textbooks, uh, usually the current position of a particle is usually expressed as a function of the initial position of that particle x. Yeah. So therefore, you can also express the deformation gradient as the derivative of the as the ratio of the, as the derivative of the deformation of that particle in the current configuration with respect to the initial configuration. Yes, and this deformation gradient plays a very important role in solid mechanics because it allows you to compute the wide variety of strains and stresses that you will usually find computed in many computational codes. But now I would like you to talk about what would be the counterpart when using peridynamics, in this case, the kinematics on this scheme. And the main important difference is that there is no deformation gradient. And why is that? I will explain to you in this slide. So in the first part here, uh, we will use the same configuration. We have the potato that is being uh, deformed to this, to this configuration. But there is some important difference in the notation as well as the computations on, on, over, this, over each of these uh, particles. The first thing to notice here is that the, a new notation indicating a bond, which is denoted by C, appears here. And C is denoted by the initial position of the particle Q minus the initial position of the particle p. So these two particles will create a link which will be called a bond. And this is sim something similar to classical mechanics in which you have a fiber. So let's, let's uh, but in this case, they call it a bond. The second important thing to notice here is that the deformation of this bond will happen, will be called 
with a capital letter and underline um, because, because of the state-based notation. I will not go into details about that, but the deformation is also denoted as the deformation of the particle Q minus the deformation of the particle P. So this deformation of this bond is also keeping the same format as in classical mechanics as it is here. But the important difference here and to notice is that in this picture we can see here a new variable called delta and it has a sub index called p because and uh, because it is associated to the particle p and this delta it's indicated the radius of interactions of the particle p with all other particles that are inside this sphere or in this case uh, a circle yes but in 3d it's a sphere so meaning that this particle p will interact with all these uh, small particles that are inside here creating a bond many different bonds called c c prime and so on yes we name it as as you wish and each of these bonds will obey this uh, deform, deform configuration expression as it is here. Yes. The other thing here to notice is that the formation of the particle P, which is this one here, will can be expressed only as a function as a sum of the initial position of this particle xp plus the displacement of this particle p yes and the same would go for the deformation of this particle q here will happen to be the initial configuration of the particle q plus the displacement vector here uh, u which is denoted as u it will give you the the deformed configuration of these two particles. So, and this difference will give you the deformed configuration of the bond. So you have the bond in the initial configuration and then the bond on the final configuration or the current configuration. Now, if you substitute these quantities here, uh, inside here, into this, you will end up this expression that can be simplified as as the sum of d two of two vectors which will be the bond initial configuration plus the bond displacement difference which is which is computed as the difference between these two values yes and these two expressions are analog to each other i mean they want in for one, some formulations they prefer to use this this uh, formulation expressed here on some others they prefer to express it the as it is in here but the important thing here is that there is doesn't exist any mapping function from the initial to the current configurations at is as it is in classical mechanics so in other words the peridynamics formulations is employing only true deformations not and not any derivatives which as it is in solid mechanics when you are using here a uh, computing a gradient and also an important thing to say is that when you are computing a gradient or in this case derivatives you are always assuming a continuous displacement field from one configuration to the other meaning that there is no space for discontinuities to exist between one between the field or between the displacement field which doesn't is not the case in peridynamics and this is why the peridynamics formulation has is quite uh, favorable uh, when employing for the simulations of cracks so thank you very much guys i hope you enjoyed this uh, video 
please I remind you, uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know your comments. I would love to know what what is what do you think about these videos and what would you like to see on the contents on the contents of them and uh, give it a like if you did like this video as well so and see you next time all right keep safe goodbye